G'day folks. Well, something I've been meaning to get out of the way is the uh, old Jag engine. As you can see I've already taken manifolds and things off. It's a bit bare but I've still got to strip the uh, long block down, take the torque converter and everything off which is all junk. Like, the auto that was on this was absolutely trashed so the torque converter and bell housing are of no practical value so they're all scrap but I want to see what I can salvage from the long block at least for uh, rebuilders purposes the water pumps are always being remanufactured like you get a changeover so the water pump itself even though it'd probably leak in normal service it's well worth keeping because it's a remanufacturable item uh, harmonic balance is pretty damn old so that probably won't be kept engine mounts are old and compressed but see what else I can keep off it uh, or at least I don't want to keep it I want to send it to somebody who can use it so yeah I'm just in the process of unbolting it lifting it up with the crane and uh, I'm going to wheel this trolley out from under it and just drain the oil into a tub I was going to try and vac it out but it's really viscous heavy white oil so it'd take a while and be messy so I'd rather just lift it up with the hoist on here and here and see how I go I'm trying to separate the heads going to be the fun part because this thing is very very corroded and the worst thing is they corrode they get coolant up through the uh, head stud holes and they corrode themselves in place so I'm going to su suspend it off the cylinder heads from the crane after I've taken all these nuts off and chains and things like that take the cams out and then I'll just release everything and just suspend it off the crane and leave it hanging but I've got a feeling I'm going to need jacks to actually jack up off the block hydraulic bottle jacks and just try and bottle jack that head or clean up off the studs it'd be a very lengthy process in many cases hmm I was going to let the oil on that one go a bit too long I don't think I ever changed it since I got it. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Carbon black. But then this engine has chronic blow-by so it wouldn't surprise me in the least if part of that's fuel just sitting in there. Right, this engine was very sad. That's why it's coming apart. It's not a happy engine at all. It's a shame. It's a very nice engine but time has come for it to go. I'm trying to find a place that actually wants this block assembly and everything but I'm going to try and get the head off at least. They did put a bit of effort into it, the old British Pommies, whoever built it. An old Pommy car. There's a block number. Hmm. These things hold about 9 litres of oil normally. You can't fill this one up all the way because the blow-by has a tendency of pressurising the crankcase to the point where the PCV can't keep up and it blows part of the oil out the dipstick it covers the firewall and the exhaust system and the whole underside of the car that's why the series one that I had was well pretty much coated underneath the car with oil because this is the engine that came out of it, it had a habit of just spraying oil everywhere okay well Apart from all the nasty oil, the rest of this looks pretty reasonable. The cams are very worn. That one there especially, you can see it. Not even evenly worn. But still, the nice pointy cam lobes, it's in really good condition. Oh, it, is, it looks really good. I guess as far as tolerances are concerned, it's not so good. But as you can see, these just run on uh, followers or shims. No tappets, no rockers, no nothing. They're just straight over the valves. They haven't been uh, grub screwed. One of the mods they do, like on the Series 1 that this engine came out of, the replacement engine, these valve buckets were grub screwed into place so that they don't lift out when the head gets hot. Uh, if they lift out when the head gets hot, the cam lobe collides with the edge of the bucket and causes untold carnage like total carnage so one thing they do is grub screw the valve buckets so they cannot come out these ones here look like they're in in place properly but yeah either way I've got to remove part of this tensioner assembly 
which is down in there. Um, I've got a feeling I'll take all this off first and just expose the whole timing chain assembly before I start taking stuff off. Shouldn't be too hard. The chain's loose as hell. It's very worn. But it looks good. It's not all, not all carboned up. Mind you, Brad has had his way with it plenty of times before. <laughs> Only way it passed roadworthy inspection was with all the blue gunk. Blue Max. Well, getting there. I'm getting to the uh, front cover. Got the face of the pulley off, the air conditioning and alternator drive. Unfortunately, the harmonic balance is being a little bit of a bitch. Not that you'd really call it a harmonic balancer since the rubber's turned to very hard carbonised plastic. <laughs> I don't think it'll be used ever again. Hell, given what I'm about to do with Daddy Long Legs here, I don't think it's even going to be in one piece. This outer piece feels like it's going to separate, but we'll see what we can do. It's never going to be used again anyway. It's way too cooked and old. Not too much corrosion in the water pump gallery anyway, so this front cover could be reused. Uh, yeah, we'll try and reuse as much of this engine as possible. or will get it remade. Camshafts are nice and apparently very worn. I was talking to Brad about it and he said, yeah, that's not good. They could be remanufactured or I could keep them and just I don't know, use it, beat someone over the head with it. <laughs> That's about all they're good for. Defensive weapon or wall hanger or possible remanufacture. I'll go with remanufacture or wall hanger. I'm not keen to beat someone over the head with a camshaft, even though it looks like you'd probably do a good job on somebody with that. That's about two and a half feet long. Oh, two feet long. Two foot long camshaft. Well, that's that one. Bashing it with a hammer didn't do anything, but as soon as I loaded up with Daddy Long Legs here, it went pop. That's a taper locked harmonic balancer. I had a feeling it was. As soon as I saw these notches, the splits in the inner bushing, that's sort of a giveaway that there's a tapered bushing in there. It won't come off though, but I'm guessing that won't be too hard to pry away. Just use the harmonic balancer bolt as a reaction member and the rest of that bushing should come away but that balancer is very badly degraded so I'm not even going to bother keeping that it's trash from the record watching it run it doesn't even run true like it's off center so that's junk but at least now I can get the front cover off oh well, hopefully there's studs going through the head so I might even have to drop the sump before I can do that if I can't swing it out far enough and drop it down. Hmm. This whole exercise is probably quite futile if that's the case. I don't think I'll be getting that head off. Now there we go. Took a bit of mucking around. I did have to ask Brad how these go together, but I can get these cams out now. That pin was stopping me before. I didn't realise these were two pieces. But, yeah, two bolts safety wired together cut the safety wires, take the bolts out cams will come out and I should be able to get these chains out too nice double row chain very worn but still makes a nice belt or something like that <laughs> intermediate chain which is this one and then there's a main chain that goes down to the crankcase it would be fun to see an engine of some description throw a timing chain wrap part of it around the crankshaft and just turn it into a flail. Apparently Brad's seen it and cut the front of the car apart. Just imagine that sort of thing doing 6,000 RPM. Make one hell of a flail. <laughs> you don't want to get in the way of a failed timing chain. Hmm. Got one cam out and I found fun stuff. That looks like they've been doing the valve buckets. They've been pinning them in place rather than grub screwing from this side. They've drilled and tapped right next to them and jammed bolts in and just twisted the heads off, like they bottomed it out and snapped the heads clean off. They're not even cut off, they just snapped snapped off hard. So, didn't notice that one. You'd also notice, whoopsie, these cam bearings are coming apart. That's been scraping against the camshaft, it's got nice big gouges through it. And there's a piece of it sitting there too. 
So the old girl didn't have long to live. One of the cams or something would have taken the shit. All right, that bearing's gone. We'll see what these other bearings are like, but you can see, yeah, these valve buckets have been pinned into place. See if we can remove one of the followers. Yep. And there's the valve itself, there's the bucket, and that is a shim. You have to measure, before you take the camshaft out, you measure what the tolerance is and then calculate what shims you need to water. And that's about it. Is there more pieces to that? Doesn't look like it. I'm guessing that's it. That's a, that's a shim. It's thick, but I'm guessing you can order certain thicknesses as you require. And that goes back in there. Nissan Micro is very similar. It just has this sort of setup. There's no rockers, no tappets, no adjustments. You just have to shim them if they do need it. Thankfully, the old little car doesn't need it, but... Well, not as far as I know, anyway. But, yeah, I'm not looking forward to having to do that one. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have to do it. But, that's a nice little whacking stick. Not good for much else more. It could be remanufactured, but still, it's pretty damn worn. And scored in some places. Some fairly big score marks. Yeah, you can just imagine in the next Saints Row, dual wielding camshafts with a sprocket and chain hanging off each end instead of the penetrator. I don't mind using the penetrator against uh, targets, but I'd love to see this in the game with the sprocket on it and about half a foot of chain hanging off each end. Dual wield. <laughs> Splat. <laughs> now, badass camshafts. Not too heavy either. They're drilled all the way through or cast all the way through for oil galleries. And these bearings, well, same deal. They're fairly well shot, partially delaminating. They've been shimmed, the buckets have been pinned, probably because the engine's been cooked. Uh, when these ends do get hot, these outer buckets do lift and they do smash the camshafts up, so that's pretty much what's happened here. It hasn't smashed it, but they've done a preventative job on it. Now I've just got to get these sprockets out so I can reattach them to the camshaft. Get the rest of the chain out. And try and separate that head. I don't like my chances, but we'll give it a shot. Well, when coolant water is exploding out from under the nuts, on a cylinder head, you know you're probably going to have problems getting it off. This is going to be interesting. Definitely had coolant getting into the uh, cylinder head stud through holes. How seized this head is, I don't know. There's some copper anti-seize on some of these, but God knows how long ago they applied that. Probably quite a long time ago. It has had... Alright, starting to get the cylinder head off. You know, normally these things take a long time, but I don't know, suspending the whole engine by the head after taking the nuts off kind of works. That and playing whack-a-mole with it. You know, the arcade game where you go whack, whack, whack. You know, the moles pop, out, pop up out of the holes and you got to whack them on the head with a hammer. Same sort of deal. Not going to be able to use the studs or the nuts again, but it's actually working. I can see daylight through the underneath of that head. The camera's not picking it up, but it is moving. There's a gap there. In some cases, this can take months to achieve. Anyway, I'll do that. Probably even uh, find a nice big heater or something to heat it right up. Uh, keep pouring water down the studs. The corrosion or the aluminum oxide that's locking it in there is water soluble more than anything. Oil won't do much, but water will. Plus a lot of heat will help soften it right up. So it should be pretty good. Hell, I might even have this head off tonight. You can see that that's already lifting up. I've got to get this end to lift up. 
<laughs> oh, this is a lot easier than I was expecting it would be. I can see daylight under there. It's not going to be anywhere near as hard as I thought it would be. Mind you, I do have two jacks. Probably not ideal. Bottle jacks would be preferred because you can just stick it between there and there. These are probably going to twist and damage themselves, but it doesn't matter. They're $50 Repco jacks. And, uh, yeah, whacking the head studs, which are pretty much bottomed out now. I should loosen those nuts off and the whole thing will probably just fall off. The block will fall on the floor. But, yeah, sometimes it can take months, even a year, to get a head off one of these engines. Depends how dedicated you are and how badly corroded it is. But apparently this one's been apart before. It definitely has a different head gasket on it, like a monotorque head gasket. And, uh, well, yeah, even though there's coolant getting to the studs, it's not that badly corroded. Or at least not dried out and solidified. That's the worst thing with aluminum oxide. It solidifies and cements everything in place. Uh, the old Davy pull pumps with the cast alloy housings are like that. You end up snapping the heads off the bolts because they're, they're just cemented in. Anyway, this thing's about done. Yeah, like a boss. <laughs> no tough old jag and withstand the Ed Systems treatment. Just got to suspend it from its own mass and yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs>